where our guest today is a man whose talents include comedy, painting, and Nancy Sorrel. The man, the man who asks questions like, no, uh, that no one else would dare, questions like, what is on the end of my stick? <laughs> Does Joan Collins entice young men into her home with a trail of worms and the, the answer is no, she uses chlor uh, chloroform and uh, an anonymous looking van. <laughs> Other questions like, Jeremy Clarkson, for which the answer is, <laughs> the, uh, the creator of Surreal Celebrity Panel Show, Shooting Stars, the co-host of that show with his uh, comedy father, Bob Mortimer. He's an acclaimed artist and now, of course, a published author of a vast book of world knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, at Google, proudly presents The Greed. Thanks very much. That was a lovely introduction and quite a dramatic entrance by me from there. I don't know, I was on the verge from there. Usually I'd be shrouded in mist or a, car or a cardboard box and I'd be burst from, but you've missed out on that. Anyway, so, uh, oh, yes, these, these are uh, there at um, 40 illustrations from my new book. Has anyone seen my new book? <laughs> I might still support to put it on display in the shops, but it's, uh, it's pretty hard to find. So I'll, uh, anyway, you can find them if you look. But, um, so it's got 260 illustrations, which I did. I went to see my uh, literary agent. She said, do I want to do a kid's book? And I said, I'll have a crack at it. And uh, so this is what turned out. It's not really a kid's book. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it took me three months to put all these pictures together. I just sat in the studio and painted every day for three months, and this is what came out. So I've got 40 of them here. And actually, I did see my um, literary agent this week, and I said, I've come up with an idea for a kid's book, I think. And I think it's the work. And I showed her the pictures, and she said, it, you could, we could do this, but it would disturb a lot of children. So it is, uh, and they are quite grotesque characters. So that's, that's probably going to come out not as a kid's book as well. <laughs> this is what they call a family book. And it's got um, 260 illustrations and accompanying writings about things, everything you should know in the world. So what I'm going to do, I think, I've been going around all around the country doing things like that, big theatres. And uh, so I, usually I get interviewed by someone and, we can uh, try and tie that in, and then after that, I play what I call Art Bingo, which is someone shouts out a number, and then I select one of these numbers from here, and I'll tell you about one of the pictures, the pages on there. So we might as well start doing that now. So anyone got a number? Twenty-one. Oh, he's quick. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and then I go with my cursor to twenty-two. Yeah, and then I double click. It should have, but there it is! <laughs> <laughs> I usually uh, have a broom to point at these things, you know, like a pointing stick, but I ain't got one today, so I'll use a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> that's Alan Todd. Now, that's, uh, this, is, this is Alan Todd, and this is um, a character that I invented his whole life, actually, and there's about, which are in the book, about 20 other paintings, because he was a uh, company. Uh, the film star Alan Todd featured in many aviation movies since 1975. The rest of it I can't read. <laughs> but he was uh, an aviation um, film, a bit like Alan Todd, not Alan Todd. Who did that just died? Richard Todd. Richard Todd. I worked with Richard Todd once as well, but you know, he doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, so, Alan Todd was in lots of films about planes. Uh, you can read his story in the book as well. He eventually um, ended up, he was a big star, uh, and then ended up in some very low budget porn films. About <laughs> 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 <Not> aeroplanes. I finally seen in his self financed film, The Odinist. That's the kind of the Andes. And that's pretty much it. That's Alan Todd. It's a very big painting, that, actually, and I'm very much in favour of the, this nose area here, which looks quite metallic and phallic at the same time. Phallic metallic. Now, oh, there's a name for an album. 
Uh, give me the name and uh, number. Something. Number four. Or perhaps at least some cities. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one's not. Double click. What? Double click. There it is. Yeah, cities. Oh, now this is uh, one of the dioramas that I made. Which uh, is well, it's a collage and a diorama. That's the sky above Ashford. Some, uh, some, some Ashford buildings. There are over a thousand cities worldwide, people living in them and work in them. They eat in them and they sleep in them, generally in office blocks. <laughs> Men live in the east side of the cities and women in the west. They have to meet in the middle to exchange gifts and laugh at each other. <laughs> there are the women there and there are the men. They haven't met in the middle yet, but that's a nice little collage. It's kind of uh, a sort of 20s kind of collage, isn't it? On a piece of uh, on a photograph, that's nice. But that's another number. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. I don't even know. I'm going to even look. Thirty-one. Ah yes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Quadruple click. You mean? Thor. <laughs> the great god Thor. And there he is. A very powerful man. And these, I like doing these on a lot of my pictures. I like doing because I like those um, those Victorian illustrations where you get people who sort of have comments at the scene. So I've kind of moved to a bit more modernist than these ones. And this lady here says, he conducts clouds, i.e. stratus cumulus, etc. <laughs> That's not something that you would say, isn't it? If you saw it before, you might come you know, say that. He says. This was the Scandinavian god of thunder and hammer technique. <laughs> Oi, Thor, how about a tune on your harmonium? He wrote Candle in the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> and has Sutton coming there. <laughs> they say he adored reggae music, especially in Studio One Dub. <laughs> <laughs> He was the temperature of the sun. 5,880 Kelvin. What a guy. <laughs> Who knows whose eyes they are? Anyone? He can't return. It's Harry Hill! <laughs> I like Harry Hill's eyes on there. I like Thor. I find him very appealing. Another number. 26. 26 and 1. I'll show you 26 first. I'm going to double click really slowly. <laughs> oh, I see what's happening. I need to exit. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, there's a bit of um, quantum physics. <laughs> this is what uh, scientists believe quantum physics probably looked like. <laughs> in the <laughs> okay. And there it is. That is probably what quantum physics is. Is there any quantum physicists around? Yeah. Are you a quantum physicist? Is that what it looks like? It's a bit more red. Is it red? <laughs> 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 that looks like a bit of liver. Is that what is quantum physics based on liver? based on sort of kidneys, I think. Do you know what it is? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that the other day. <laughs> Where did I hear that? <laughs> I'll tell you what, so I want to see a serious man, you know, the new Coen Brothers film. Well, he explained that, and he stood in front of his students, and he said exactly what you said, and no one knew what he was talking about. <laughs> so what is it about cats hiding in boxes? So it's a bit like existentialism. <laughs> <laughs> I generally know what a cat's doing in the box. Can't fool me anyway, so that's what. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my. 
the next time, the next book, I'll do a cat hiding in a box. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the brother, that's number two. You were number one, didn't you, but you got number two. Um, the Bronte sisters wrote hundreds of novels uh, that sold hundreds of copies around Yorkshire. <laughs> Their titles include such well-known books as The Hobbit, <laughs> Rare Rabbit, and Macbeth. <laughs> they all died young in an air crash on their way on the, around the country on the world with a little skinny. The sinister one, Carol, the peculiar one, Judith, the startled one. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, does, does anyone know this painting? You must have seen it in this picture of the Bronte sisters. Has no one seen it? Yeah. It was uh, painted by their brother. <laughs> who was in the picture, but he got robbed out because he was a bit mad. He, he died and he got rid of him from the picture. Um, number, number one, that was, that was the first one I did. But I got asked to do a kid's book. That was my idea of one kid's book I wanted to see. <laughs> That's all about everything you need to know about an antelope. Skeleton. Uh, scientists have not had enough time to examine the whole antelope skeleton. <laughs> 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 I'm not quite sure about what it looks like. That was maybe what it looks like. That was back on this antelope skeleton. And uh, here, binoculars are mostly used. <laughs> You antelopes up close. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't got a pair of binoculars in the book, you cut that out. And the book is used that. So look at them, just hold it up, and you probably see it. <laughs> yeah, um, cut it along the top of the night, gives you all the instructions there. <laughs> Blue onto cardboard from a sugar book pack, or personal. I should get up first. I thought I was having porridge this morning. It was all right. I wanted to put some honey in as well. Didn't. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. No. I don't want to go down here. Just click once. No, I can't get down to 35. Yeah, click once. Click once what? Click away from the miles. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Behind her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the back of the head. But it's 
No, she had a bun on when, you know, from that picture that I drew that from. But I quite like your idea. You're not the first who's pointed out that it looks like someone's behind it. <laughs> and looking at it, it is Brezhnev. <laughs> Very dead though, but um, that shouldn't matter. <laughs>
13. <coughs> Fighters. People who fight. Men who fight at night. <laughs> They're out in the pub. Looking for a fight. And they are. And they are having a fight there. <coughs> Lion drawing there. And these. Actually, do you know what this took me for an hour to do? It's because I had to find these fists, which I stuck up. I found them in the right position. I about five hours looking for them. And then realised it was a waste of time. That was fast <laughs> I'm enormously cross and considering striking you. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> I will lump you. <laughs> that picture fight as a volcano representing anger. <laughs> there in the corner. The piano. The anatomy of a piano. The keys and the wheels. It's <laughs> a very nice looking piano, isn't it? Anyone play the piano? Isn't that, oh, look, isn't that bizarre? Are you any good? Do you think you've not got that many wheels? No! <laughs> oh, you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a hover piano. <laughs> yes, the hover piano. 37. 37. Well, this is a bit of ancient Persian history for you. <laughs> that, please. Oi! Give me that bell statue thing, he says, to the Babylonians. You need to know your history before you have a look at it. <laughs> What's that pop upon his head? Says the Babylonian. Nick is to Xerxes, says an Athenian. In the BC time of history, Xerxes was the king of Persia. The first thing he did was nick the golden statue of Bel from Babylon. Then the Greeks called him Zerko the Jerko. Perko. <laughs> so he kicked seven Bell there and set the fight to happen. Then he got murdered by his son. You see, it's all true. <laughs> you could, you know, I could have that up in a history lesson at school. And I don't think they'd walk away. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> As with this one, if we're talking about history. Oh, no, I'm going to no, show you this. King Kong. <laughs> now, this is a real sketch I did of King Kong because, as far as I know, I'm the only person in the world who's ever seen King Kong, <laughs> and that's what he looked like, sort of, as he looked out from the bush. <laughs> and um, surprisingly smaller than has been portrayed in films and books, if about that big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely saw it through the eyes. There was a few others in there as well. <laughs> Quite a few. Um, Quicksand. This is what I, I did at the end of the day. <laughs> Too many young lovers have been swallowed up by the perilous quicksands that permeate our shores. Be beware when you canoodle in this treacherous and misleading surface. <laughs> there are two lovers sinking into the, the quicksand. Could be black I don't know. Goodbye, my sweet Mary. See you in hell. <laughs> Oh God, please help me. <laughs> that's, I suppose, the last thing you'd say if you were with your girlfriend, your husband, your whatever, you know, see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it anyway. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that, but there's Richard III. <coughs> I'm merciless, oh yes, I am the cruel king known as the pitiless plantagenet. So you better watch your step cock, or I might just do you in. Oh yes, as he did do, with these two little fellas, <laughs> the princes of the tower, his, um, well, his, uh, you know, Edward and his brother, the tower, isn't that his nephew, the princes of the tower, you've heard about them, haven't you? Yeah, that's what they look like. Oh, they're the dog, they're only that. They're the dog. No, no.
Now, I often go about with me by Zoom lens on the weekend, take pictures of caravans around the, back of the area. And, uh, and this is, these are the results. Caravans are used mainly to house film stars and pop singers. Surround themselves with luxury items such as ribbon, cream, wax, sturgeon, and building buckets. <laughs> this is a selection of uh, celebrities. Caravans. <laughs> Bill Johnson lives in that one. Simon and Garfunkel. Barbara Richard. Barbara Spicer. This one was Mike Tyson. So <laughs> <laughs> he clashed about one night. Well, there we are. There's plenty more. In fact, there's 260 of them. And you've seen a selection there. I'll click off one, and then you can ask me some questions. Well, I'll start put on the picture of the Zeppelin. Uh, <laughs> right, any questions? Why? Why? Who said why? Why what? Why the book? Yeah. Well, I've thought, I, you know, I've got a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that at some stage I would have to impart it. <laughs> so, uh, it's just my gift to the world. <laughs> People should know these things. Bits should know what a Zeppelin looks like. <laughs> invented by Count Martin von Zeppelin. Got the idea from when he pumped his sausage dog totally full of hydrogen. As <laughs> 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 you would when he, if he did that to a sausage dog. So I, you know, that's, that's, you know, I've got I've got these facts and information that I think should be out there. Anything else? He was first, but I'm straight on to you. After. In your opinion, which is the best decade for British comedy, the nineties or? Oh, the 90s, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been any in the noughties? <laughs> What's going on for the next decade, though? Um, what do you think? I think? Well, a lot of my favourite comedies span both. Things like League of Gentlemen, uh, Maybe in Bad League, Train, sort of things. Oh, yeah, you've got a good point. Yeah, then you can't look <laughs> beyond The Office. I don't really watch too much comedy. I didn't say The Office either. Is that any good? <laughs> 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 yes, what were you going to ask? Uh, what's your favourite Brainiac experiment? Brainiac experiment? Um, ones that, uh, that led me to be in great danger. <laughs> there was one where we tried to see which was the quickest wheel, and we rolled various wheels down this ramp, a scientific ramp. <laughs> and, uh, and the final one was, oh, and then you had to go up another ramp, jump over, so to see how, how far the leap was, and one of them was a, a massive tractor wheel, about that size, weighed about a ton, and uh, it started to veer off and head straight towards me, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know which way to go, because well, there was only one way I could go, and it was to a certain death, <laughs> so I leapt over it, and then <laughs> on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fool them. 
big take. <laughs> <laughs> thinking the Brunswick has kind of you know, personal journey around the country, but we have characters. Like Paul Rat in England. You what? Like Paul Rat, but in England. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> We might go, you know, we might go to Blackpool, we might go to Leicester, um, and then go and, and meet the, uh, the couple of councillors from Leicester, <laughs> <laughs> which we would be playing them. We would go and visit a hairdresser who lives in the hill. So, you know, we can get around that. And yes, it will be a kind of sketch job. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's television school. <laughs> we might end up, we'll end up doing it, you know, I shouldn't be scared of technology because we'll end up doing it on it. It'll be on there, you know, you click a button and there, there's your sketch show for you. Done very cheaply. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be one more time. Why do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you say that? Do you think I should do it with someone else? <laughs> yeah. No, we'll be me and Bob, yeah. He's your main man. Yeah, he's my mate, so, I'll, you know, that's, I'll do it on the air. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Yes, what would you like to know? Um, what's the true story when Bob jumped on stage? Exactly, he's left me uh, going with the microphone. <laughs> what's the true story when Bob jumped on stage at uh, your big night? No, it's, no, that's a, one of the, uh, that's a, a myth. You would never jump on stage anywhere. <laughs> he sat at the back, you know, when, when started, starting off, he was a friend of a friend, he sat in the audience, and he was going to put it there. It was all pretty loose. Doing something next week. I just give him a scrap of paper and then he walked on stage. I think with a check for um, a million pounds that he presented to me for all the, the work that I've done for all the poor children in the world, <laughs> which I then pocketed. <laughs> that was the first thing he ever did, but it was kind of a crappy joke. But, and, then, uh, and then he came on the next week with a, um, a trophy. <laughs> Do you know what we had that time? Talking about trophies, we were on uh, on shooting stars. We had um, David Dickinson on, and uh, I gave him a trophy, little one of those tin pop trophies that you get for about two ninety nine. And uh, I said that was that's the trophy that Britain gave Churchill after the war. <laughs> and you know what they do? Like they always, they always have a look underneath. I knew he was going to do that, so I put a foul picture on him. That's not really quite... Um, <laughs> the first thing he did was, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever want to take anything into an auction, just <laughs> uh, glue something unmentionable underneath it. <laughs> isn't one of Tom's, but I used to live in Tom's house. He was a friend of mine and he was uh, he was moving, so I said, well, I'll, I'll buy your house up here then. And uh, there was quite a few Tom artifacts in the house. <laughs> one of them, it was, it was uh, next to a graveyard, and one of them was, his, he had his grave there. It was in Tom Baker, 1927 too. <laughs> so he's, he's, when he, you know, he doesn't live there now, of course, but um, when, he, when he perishes, that's where he's going to be buried. I think we should say 1927 to 19. <laughs> like that. But he's a time traveller, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> and no, this is one of Tom's. It's not long enough to be one of Tom's anyway. <laughs> it's, not, it's not long enough. <laughs> no, this was John Persons. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Out of all the celebrities you've met in, in your course, who's been the biggest disappointment? <laughs> um, oh, she's the biggest disappointment. <laughs> we had. Um, we had. Jordan on shooting stars. Well, she was uh, a bit miserable, very miserable. She said, um, 
I thought I didn't know she was, to be honest. And, uh, I thought she was one of the cleaning ladies. Sorry, mate. Well, they covered all the spots up. And uh, so she, she came and she said, um, she said, don't mention me tits. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> and then back so I didn't. But I did give her lots of presents. So a little pair of porcelain blue tits. She's got a lot of presents. She just sat there and scowled. Yeah, she just legged it. So she was quite miserable. Um, disappointments. No, yeah, I've always been very happy with the things. <laughs> yes, anyone else? Yeah. Which gets the most confused by Jesus? Americans. Always the Americans. <laughs> J.R. Ewing. But you know the strange thing about Americans is that we are, in Britain, we're really used to watching American television. And we, you know, we don't find any problems with American actors. But the Americans don't really watch the British. They have yeah, EastEnders and that's the time. <laughs> they don't really understand what we're talking about. We've got maybe too many experts. No, okay. he, he didn't actually understand anything because he didn't know what anyone was saying. <laughs> if I was all been in Russia, he was in that place. He sat there and smiled. And uh, Robin Ginn, <laughs> he, uh, he said he would go on only if we plugged his and showed us the clip. <laughs> if he gave a song, he needed it in the video. And, uh, so we said, all right, we'll do that. And we showed about a second. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't very happy. But we know the sort of show that shows and says, oh, that's an issue, let's do DVDs. We didn't show them up. I think it was two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but Americans really don't really get it. Very wide. Anything else before I clear off? If you, if you do another series of shooting, well, we we have a list of a wish list of guests, which starts with Clint Eastwood and you know and George Clooney and things like that. And then it goes down. And then when they all say no, you get what's at the bottom of the list. It's usually someone from Hollyoaks. Do I say who's who are they? Who's that? I don't know. I've never seen Hollyoaks, so I don't know who they are. Um, we'll get someone from. Uh, one of the doctor shows. <laughs> <laughs> Generally someone from a talent competition. And a rapper. <laughs> I was always very keen to go on. So we, uh, we the last one, we we tried to get rappers on every show. And, uh, and told, our, told their agents to get them to bring along a mascot. Said <laughs> so everyone's bringing the mask up, but no one else did apart from the rappers. <laughs> trying to encourage some sort of thing for the rappers to go around with the rappers. <laughs> 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 so I turned up with some useless mask. <laughs> they don't just bought that afternoon. <laughs> so, you know, that room is about right. We will go and see, you know, Dizzy Rascal will have his mascot on stage. <laughs> we'll see it live. <laughs> Anything else? Are you all back to work? What's the funniest thing about celebrity? Well, it's very earnest now, isn't it? Very, you know, I, I think it's very funny. I mean, I suppose I've a career up and I think it's funny. Because I think it is funny. Um, I don't know. I think it's the pomposity of celebrities when they get a bit uh, too big for the shoes. You know, uh, you know people with um, entourages always makes me laugh. <laughs> and I feel sorry for the entourage. I saw I was on Paul R. Grady's show this week and uh, um, there was a girl singer on. Anyone say that? Did the odd work. Um, <laughs> God, I can't remember her name now. She's some big American singer anyway. And, she, and when she walked off stage, she had about 10 people after her like that, <laughs> to do her eyebrows. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think that, you know, pomposity is funny, that's the funny thing about it, I suppose. Well, have you got a lot of work on this afternoon?
<laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'm going to go off shopping anyway. It's been very nice meeting you. Um, thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.